I don't know what kind of cell service this next guest has, <laughs> but uh, we'll definitely get his thoughts on everything. He has been all over the place. He went to all training camps. He's been on the Rich Eisen, hosting the Rich Eisen show. He is the man, the myth, the legend, former NFL linebacker, an even better guy. Let's bring him on now. Kirk Morrison joins uh, the show. Kirk, how are you doing? Thank you so much for jumping on with us. Good, good. What's up, fellas? Can you hear me? I'm good. Yeah, yeah loud yeah, and clear, good. Kirk. Styling and profiling. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I had a little time. Uh, my son has a little uh, a little workout session that he goes to. So I was like, man, this is perfect. I can chat with the guys while he go in there and uh, go push some sleds. Okay. Are you, are, are you in the car or are you driving or are you stuck in traffic or are you oh, just waiting I'm, for I'm in the car. I'm chilling. I'm good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to take too much Gilbert, of your time. No, 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 no. He's I, a I, responsible I'm, adult. Yes. I'm obeying the law. Okay. Now, okay. I just want to double check, Kirk. He's me, trying to dry <laughs> No, I just want to make sure you're good, Kirk, because we appreciate your time. And also, we're going to put you on the spot. You did call us out. You, you, we were walking by, uh, at I think maybe Rams camp or Saints camp. You were all over the Saints. place. We were too. Saints. Uh, Saints, camp. Saints. In Irvine, and you're like, hey, when are you gonna get me on? And hey, yeah. we, me and Fernando started talking. You know what? I don't know. Kirk is busy. He's you know doing all these college <laughs> football games. He's filling in for Rich Eisen. Should we? Should we? And you're responding to the call. We appreciate it. No oh, man, appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate what y'all do, and uh, we have fun doing it. So anytime you guys need me, you know I'm always available. Kirk, uh, what, what what's that moment been like for you to get that call from Rich Eisen asking you, hey, can you can you fill in for me? And how much fun have you had on the show? Because it seems like these new shows, I mean, Dan Patrick, Rich Eisen, the Pat McAfee, it seems like it's all your boys. You're having fun. You're having a good time. It's a good atmosphere. Just what what was that like to have a uh, to be on on that kind of show and get that call? You know, it's always cool. I've uh, known Rich for a very long time and. Uh, it's just funny because it's like if you would have asked me a long time ago uh, when I was first retired in the league to go and host a radio show, I don't know if I could be able to do it because, you know, old school radio fellas was like, you know, it was like you, you're you talking and you got to be, you know, have your, your ins and your outs and you got to have your topics ready and this, this and that. And I think radio has now changed. It's turned into like a full-on just discussion with our buddies, right? It's, you know, we call it barbershop talk or us just talking around, having a few drinks or something like that. I think it's, it's, it's more fun. So when I get that call, it's like I'm the long-distance cousin that's just coming to go visit his boys, right? Going to go see his cousins and I go hang out. So uh, I'm always grateful for Rich for allowing me the opportunity to keep his seat warm for him, let him have a couple uh, deserve days off from time to time, but it truly is fun because literally you just start talking and we go off on so many different little tangents. We start to like the best part is like during the show is, is actually during the breaks. Cause we'll talk about something, but the heated debates during the breaks sometimes come back to the show. So, I mean, I could go on and on, but it's been a cool experience. Yeah, Kirk, you know, I can only imagine all the banter going on behind the scenes and you can't, yeah. you know, can't get into it. But sometimes there's like you get in the heat of the moment of a debate during on air and it just keeps yeah. going and going after. So I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself, uh, Kirk. But, you know, we got a couple of discussions for you here, about three to four. You know, uh, let us know if you have enough time here. We don't want to take too much again. But oh, I have, I'll have, I'll have, I'll take this one, Fernando. You could take the next one to lead the charge here. Uh, but let's start with the L.A. Rams, no a team that you, uh, what was that? I said no pun intended. Oh, sorry. Let's start with the L.A. Rams and the team that you cover very well. And some news came out, which you would think they would be a little quiet before the, the final preseason game. But uh, there's some back and forth where Ernest Jones potentially wanted to trade or not wanted to trade. Maybe the agent does. Maybe Ernest Jones doesn't know. Uh, who knows what's going on with that one? But I'll give you a little bit of a two-parter. How critical is it to keep Ernest Jones on that roster? And then the whole with the Ale Alaric Jackson getting suspended in a couple games of left tackle. How do you feel about the Rams knowing this information now? Yeah, this is one of the more buttoned up teams. And now you got a couple of things that have uh, really come out to light. So first of all, I'll start with Lark Jackson because that's a two game suspension because that affects everybody else on the 53 man roster. Somebody else may now have an opportunity to make this roster uh, just because if you're going to be without a Lark Jackson for first two games. Does that mean that the Rams have to keep extra tackles? or an extra guard, extra swing player along that offensive line. So that that's going to be one in which Sean McVay, they have to figure out how they're going to handle this. But 
that's two games without your starting left tackle as well. How do you get through it? That would be very interesting. So I think this is something that you don't see this happen too often, a Rams player being suspended for, um, you know, for conduct. And you've got two players suspended, not just Alari Jackson. You still have to talk about the Jimmy Garoppolo who suspended, who suspended for the first two games. So that's two Rams that are suspended. Uh, it, it's crazy to think because we never have to talk about this in L.A. Ram country, but this is the, the big topic of conversation. On the, up, on the other side with Ernest Jones, this is an interesting one because here you have a guy who's entering the final year of his contract who's been your starting linebacker since he was drafted uh, midway through his 2021 season. He's going into the final year, but the Rams truly haven't really paid a defensive player outside of a guy on the defensive line in Aaron Donald, but also Jalen Ramsey. Everybody else they've kind of priced themselves out and had to go other places. Am I right? I mean, I think of John Johnson, you know, drafted there, but when it was time for free agency, he had to go to the market. Same thing with Jordan Fuller, had to go to the market. A guy who was a starter from his rookie season. Uh, you just look up and down that defensive front. I mean, even I could throw in Samson uh, Ebelkamp. Free agency came, had to go somewhere else. This falls in line with who the Rams are. They draft, they develop, and then they let you go. So if I'm Ernest Jones, yeah, I feel like I've proved and I've earned a contract. But let's be honest, the Rams just aren't going to pay what Roquan Smith got with the Baltimore Ravens or Patrick Queen got with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's not who the Rams are. They value more offense than they do defense. And then there's another thing is seeing Omar Spates not play in that third preseason game because he felt that they felt that he made the team or made a big impact. That was the big thing that came out of the third preseason game as well for a guy who was undrafted to be pulled or not even play. That to me is a telling sign that the Rams are maybe comfortable with letting and trading away Ernest Jones. That's, that's some knowledge right there, Fernando, on, on the linebacker situation, because I'm starting to wonder if Ernest Jones or his agent, at least, I don't want to say it's Ernest Jones, you know, totally Correct. doing this. But, like, you start thinking, like, he probably thinks, like, well, they're lacking a lot of depth be at the position. I have some leverage here. They need me. It's, it's a young defense. They don't have Aaron Donald. I am not Roquan Smith, but let me give it a what? shot here. And maybe okay. the contract negotiations are lingering and lingering. And then to your point, Kirk, like, yeah, like, last year this team – tore the roster apart because they're okay with letting people walk. Unless you're Aaron Donald or Cooper <laughs> Cub, Offensive yep. Player of the Year, or Matthew Stafford, uh, you better make sure that you have a, a real contract, uh, I guess, uh, you know, situation where you're going to push them and bend their arms a little bit to make you get that contract. Fernando, uh, I don't know what you want to say about that, but I thought Kirk uh, nailed it there on the situation. Also with the with the, the emerging player uh, with Omar uh uh, who got the Spades. the nod to Spades not to make the 40 yeah. or actually 48 man roster too, the 53 man roster too. I'll say this too because the last linebacker I believe that um, that the Rams paid, who was a homegrown. When I say homegrown, is a player who they developed. That was a former first round pick in Alec Ogletree, and remember mm. with Ogletree. He was a first-round pick. So sometimes I always feel like the first-round picks get the benefit of the doubt because you want to prove everybody right. Like, hey, we got the right one. We picked this one. So Ogletree was really got paid, but he didn't finish his contract with the Rams and was traded away, uh, you know, to the, Giants. With the, to the Giants. You remember that? So I think that, you know, the one thing I can say about Les Snead, he learns on the fly. He realizes that, you know what, I can adjust. And the Rams just have not invested in a linebacker at all. I mean, the, well, Corey Littleton was a good homegrown <laughs> player that they did really well. And they're like, all right, him. bye. And he goes to the Raiders, signs a three year, <laughs> $36 million deal. I forgot about that one. I, that's a great pull, that though, because, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, Corey Littleton was like a on the ball, like, like defensive end in college, never even played yeah. off the ball linebacker. They develop him into a starting middle linebacker, plays well for the Rams, and then parlayed that into a big deal because the Rams weren't going to pay the linebacker position. It's one of those situations if you're Ernest Jones, you're like, look, I want to be here, but I don't want to go into this year without the security. But then you realize 
the Rams, that's just not a position that they tend to pay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Uh, Kirk, while you're – look, you got people excited. They said, oh, shit, the San Diego State <laughs> legend. Uh, Other <laughs> people said, Kirk Morrison, what a stud, but I hate the uh, Raiders. Yeah. Uh, somebody said that you're a certified compa, so we love that. Yes, uh, yes, another sir. person said – uh, Joe Morley said, Kirk Morrison. So you got people in here excited. He did uh -oh. say, though, <laughs> why would Kirk hang out with these two? So definitely uh, <laughs> definitely interesting. Uh, but the people love you, Kirk. We love you. But yeah. real quick, let me ask you. So there was a lot made last week. The, the Cincinnati Bengals had a joint practice with the Indianapolis Colts. Right. And there was an article written that the Bengals players were very critical of Anthony Richardson after the joint practice saying that uh, basically they were like, why didn't he throw? Why didn't he do this? Why didn't he? And they were a little bit frustrated with him. Do you think it's just trash talk? Or do you think there's something there that maybe we're not seeing about Anthony Richardson? I would say it's always a little bit of both. Um, having if, if you were there, you would probably get a better story of it. The one thing I can tell you about these joint practices is you want to leave an impression. Very rarely do you go to a joint practice and feel like you walk away like, I know they don't keep score, but you're keeping score in your head, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, we want to walk out feeling like we're better than them. And we got the better of their quarterback, the better of their team. That's how I know what I treated those joint practices. Like, we got to go out there and dominate. And so it's one of those situations where guys are going to talk junk. They're going to talk trash. They want to, you know, prove that, hey, we got the better of them and, Anthony Richardson can't do this and things like that because that's just what guys do. It motivates them. But overall, always, excuse me, always say, we'll see come week one. I mean, the preseason is now over, fellas. All the reports. That's why I always laugh at this. How many times have we heard this over the last, what, month and a half, six weeks? Oh, my God, he's having a great camp. Oh, he's having an amazing camp. I want to hear someone who's not had a good camp. Please tell me who didn't have a good camp. <laughs> Anthony oh, Richardson, I, apparently. <laughs> and that comes from the players. That doesn't come from where? It doesn't come from, like, uh, you know, management or anybody else. So the only who can really talk about the players are the guys who are covering the team. I just tend to laugh that everyone has had a great camp and – they're moving in the right direction. Oh, he's so much better than he was a year ago at this time. Let's get to week one and prove it. I, I'm now at the prove it stage of the season because everybody feels really good about themselves. And now yeah. everyone's smiling. You can do interviews with everybody. Oh, everybody's joyful. All right, I see you week one. See, see, <laughs> September 5th and 6th and 8th and 9th. Everybody show up because I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm going to see all the people who ain't been practicing, ain't been doing nothing. Are you going to be ready to go? What's going to be the excuse now if you don't play well? Or if you do play well, okay, boom. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, you know, we'll tip the cap to you. But I'm, I'm happy about that part of where we're at now that we can finally get to analyze what's on the field and not all of the uh, stuff about practice. Breaking news, Kirk Morrison is talking about Cowboys fans right there when he talks about <laughs> expectations and, and yeah. this is our season and who's playing well and, and everything. <laughs> That's funny, man. But just to, <laughs> just to add a little more here before we move on to, to the next topic, Kirk, you know, it, it's funny to me seeing how overblown people get, like, about reports uh, yes. and camp on social media. Like, if we didn't have social media. Like, it's it's okay. Players trash talking on the football right. field. Wow, what a big surprise here. Like, it's okay. Like, I don't blame the reporters for tweeting it out. But, like, I'll just say this and, and I'll, I'll move on. But, like, uh, I, I told the guys last week when I was in Denver for to check out Bo Nix and the Broncos. It was like, yeah. people tweet, tweet out about the great plays. And then, like, they start, they don't even tweet about the, the missed play or the, the yeah, right. it was inaccurate here. It's just an up and down practice. It's, guys are going to have good days and bad days. They're gonna, you're going to chirp. But, like you mentioned, the games are going to count soon. And I can't wait for that. I mean, the Chargers put on their social media a throw from Justin Herbert on Pat and Go to Quentin Johnson for a catch and a touchdown. And I said, Okay, I would like to see that in real life. Like, let's see that not just in the practice. <laughs> Show me that in a real game. Like, come on, people. What is are that we doing more of here? a shot at Quentin Johnson or Justin Herbert? 
I may be, it may be D, all of the above. You got to throw in a social team for even posting that. You know what I mean? So, but you yeah. know, that's the, that's the social teams. Like, like they just, and that's the thing. I, I've noticed that a lot of teams just throw out all the positives, like Gilbert said. And then Correct. it's like, well, show us some negatives, like a pick six or this nope. or that. So, mm. yeah. That's, I, why and, it's time, that's why it's time for week one. Yeah. Guess what? You can't hide. It, yeah. It's all out there. We can all watch the games. You can go grab your subscriptions, whatever you need, because we can analyze every throw, every catch, <laughs> every run, every missed tackle. The eye in the sky don't lie. Subscriptions. He means he wants you to pay $800 for Sunday <laughs> NFL tickets so oh, you can check man. out every single game out there. Yes, An NFL Plus important. for preseason games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, see, I got the NFL Plus for the preseason and also to all 22 during the year because I got to watch the film. Yeah. Like, I just can't uh, watch the TV. But copy. you can write it off. Watch. It's your career, man. You can write it yeah. off and get that check later. All right, man, quit telling everybody my business right now. Come on, Gil. Come on, Gil. I'm kidding. It's expensive. Yes. It's all good. Go ahead, oh, well, Let me Let me ask you uh, real quick. You mentioned the, the Chargers. Just what is your expectation of Jim Harbaugh, Justin Herbert, and this team? I mean, we heard, like – Jim even made uh, being stuck in an elevator for tw for a couple hours interesting, and right. and uh, and he broke down exactly how Justin Herbert and the rest of the guys were. But just what what have you kind of uh, what what's your thoughts on Jim Harbaugh going into this year? You know, honestly, my expectations are that they're going to be a good football team. Uh, they're going to run the football a lot. Um, they're going to play have some play action. I just don't know where they are in terms of their own division. I think that their division is obviously Chiefs and then the battle for second place. So how good can they be? Now it's Justin Herbert versus Bo Nix versus Gardner Minshew. Uh, and which guy is going to lead their team? I would say if I'm the Chargers, I just want to see this wide receiving group. And you lost a lot. And I don't know if there's anybody on that roster in terms of wide receiver that really makes me – sit back and say, wow, we got to stop him. Maybe that's a good thing for their offense, that it can be well-rounded. But I want to see how their offense kind of takes takes shape. But also, Justin Herbert, can he stay healthy for the full year? So there's a lot into the philosophy of the Chargers. There's a, I, mean, I, I honestly will learn a lot week one for, for, for both teams in the division. You get a division game right off the bat. You get Raiders coming to L.A. to kiss the Chargers. We'll learn a lot about, the. I think, the – the Chargers this season, but also what the Raiders look like. So both teams within that division. Are you going to be there? Uh, no, I'm going to be in studio for the Rams, man. We got a oh, we got yeah. Rams got the uh, got the nightcap the over Lions. in Detroit, the Lions. So trust me, I would love to be there, but I'm gonna watch that one uh, on on the tube, man, and be uh and just keep my eyes out open. Uh, and like I said, I'll be watching the game after. I, I can't just watch the TV copy and learn from that. I got to watch the All-22. What's going on? What, what am I missing? You Shannon know I mean? Sharp says that he listens to it on mute. As a former yeah. player, are you one of those guys that kind of listens to the games on mute? Because he says that sometimes he can't he, – he doesn't like listening to the analysis and all that because he's like most of it is either far-fetched, dumb, or I just don't agree with it. Is that something that you kind of think uh, you do too or do you listen to it? Well, I like to listen to it because I'm. A, it's called a copycat league for a reason. <laughs> and so there's a lot of terminology that sometimes uh, that different broadcasters use. And I don't necessarily copycat, but sometimes some of those verbiage that they use may fall into my tool belt and may be used at different times. You know what I mean? So I, I'm always scouring press conferences, news clippings, uh, video analysis, and even the games to listen to the broadcasters because that's how I truly soak up more knowledge of the game. And I think I just have a greater respect because I do it on the college level. So I know that some of those nuggets and info and tidbits are things you need to hear once and like, okay, you store it in the memory bank, right? Like Justin Herbert was president of the fishing club in high school. Like you just hear <laughs> that one time and you're like, okay, I got it. You know what I mean? And now you could talk about that later on, you know, like, man, he's always been an outdoorsman and things like that. So I love the, I love the information of it, and I try to keep as much as possible uh, in my brain. 
Real quick, Gilbert, if you really want to add a big tool to your tool belt, listen to it in Spanish and then give <laughs> give some uh, give give some stuff back in Spanish. There you go. Yeah, it's a down. Golazo. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Oh, wake up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, Kirk, guys, this is the la last question for me. I, I want to ask because sure. you you're a former player and you probably have the best insight here on this. Uh, I, I think this past weekend with the preseason finales, how I'm, I'm just going to say they were pretty boring, terrible games. Yeah. Uh, it, they do matter for the guys fighting for the last five or six spots on the roster. I don't want to be too critical, but, you know, yeah. hearing Les Snee saying, yeah, we pretty much have our 48-man roster on game days ready to go tells you, you know, by that time, you know, you know what you're doing. So, I feel like the NFL is going to use this week three terrible product and say, hey, let's cut down to two preseason games. Let's right. go to 18 games. We all win here. We get better product here, this and that. And, and, and thinking about the players here, Kirk, and obviously as a media person, both sides here, is it a good idea for the NFL to go to these 18 games or you're asking too much for a lot of wear and tear on these players where eventually also you start having the load management in the NFL. The product isn't as good, and maybe in week 12 because the guys are taking a day off. Uh, what are your thoughts on potentially going to 18 games here? Well, I think it's going to happen at some point. Um, I think uh, the overall means that you're going to get more money. Uh, I think also, too, you're hopefully I want to see expanded rosters a little bit, maybe add three to four players instead of go to 53. Let's just go to 60 as a round number. Uh, I think that that can help out. I would love to see each team have to play one international game, you know, per year. Uh, so I would love all of that and, and get two bye weeks. I think we can do that. So it works out. 20 games, two preseason, 18 regular season. That's what we continue to do. That's been the model. You had four and 16. Now we have three and 17. Now let's just move it up two and, and 18. And that's all we need. I think any more would be way too long of a season the war of attrition, but I always say, I, I didn't know if we would like 17, but we just love football. <laughs> like, like you get used to it. We'll figure it all out. So that's what I've uh, always come to say is that if it works, it works. You can't oversaturate it. We will have a football game every day of the week this year in the national I, football league. That's going to be, un I would have never thought that would happen, but the NFL will find a way. So, Let's just say Mark Davis comes up to you and he goes, "Hey, hey, Kirk, uh, where do you think uh, where do where do you think we should play next year? What what international game would you want? What what internet? Where would you want to go? If he asked you where you wanted to take the Raiders, where would you take them? Oh man, Estadio Azteca. Hey, oh, <laughs> yes, see, look, sir. Kirk got in. Kirk got into me telling him you need to grab some of that uh, Spanish uh, yes. to put into your show, and, and man, that I think they would fill that whole thing out. Man, Estadio Azteca." Mexico Remember when City, we were there, man. Gilbert? Chargers and Chiefs, man. Yeah. It was, it was so. So the way the stadium is designed, it's at every the the the, the noise stays in the stadium, so yeah. it was loud, like deafening. So I mean, like I said, I love the international series. I played in one when I was with the Buffalo Bills. We played in Toronto, the Toronto series. So um, that was always fun, and it gives a, it breaks up the the season a little bit. Gives you something to uh to do that's different you'll still have either your nine home games or eight just depending on how the year may uh fall out but or play out but i think that going to what each team playing one international game it helps out the nfl it helps out the scheduling uh it's there's no comp competitive advantage everybody's playing a similar type of schedule and i think the nfl kind of gets what they want that's 16 games that you can yeah. play internationally that's where the game is going. We're going to expand, especially with flag football coming Olympics. into the Olympics. This calling out, calling out uh, the quarterbacks, calling out Patrick Mahomes, saying oh, that his yeah. skills won't translate. I'm oh, serious, man. I mean, this is the, the NFL wants to be a global game, and they will continue to do this. Oh, Who's Kirk? He might, he might have gotten a phone oh, call. There you go. There you go. At okay. first, okay. I was saying no. But like I am all for it now because we saw it with uh, with soccer with all the soccer matches. It's perfect seeing you know Real Madrid and and Manchester. All these teams that come out, they always sell out. I think the NFL can yep. do it as well. 